Hello, I'm Malcolm Harslett. And I'm Janice Baker. What is going on in federal politics? <sighs> and what does it feel like to be dumped? Next on Our Time. time. I always thought Malcolm was a good name. We've had two Prime Ministers yes. with the name yes. and me. It's and now look what's happened. <laughs> now we've got almost an acronym of a name <laughs> as a Prime Minister. So we thought, didn't we, we, we thought, did. that it would be wise to get somebody in who really understands what's happening in federal politics. And welcome back to our time, Martin Hamilton Smith. Good evening. Are you still the right you. Honourable? Uh, the Honourable. Oh, just Honourable now. No, that, well, that's correct. <laughs> yes, actually, the right honourable is a is a um, a reference to Lord Mayors generally, and oh, also members of the Privy Council. They're British MPs. We don't use it much anymore in politics. Okay, now Martin, you've had a fascinatingly interesting career in politics. Mm. Um, I must admit, I personally always thought you should have been the Premier, and you were for a moment here in South Australia, and that must have been difficult to go through a vote like. Malcolm Turnbull's just gone through in this country and suddenly be told, oh, no, we don't want you anymore. Mm. Um, how does this system work? This is the Westminster system we have mm. here in Australia. It's how confusing it for a lot of people. Yes. Mm. Well, uh, we all thought we voted for somebody and we didn't. The three of us included. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Look, during my 25 years as a senior officer in the military, I was a keen observer. During my 21 years as a Member of Parliament in South Australia, of course, I was involved in it up to the, up to the armpits. Um, went to Canberra regularly. I met a lot of the players who were involved in recent weeks' turmoil it's in Canberra. It's a good choice of word, <laughs> players, and, I think. Um, and went through a, quite a bit of turmoil in South Australia as well because there's been a long history of division here, particularly in the Liberal Party, factions, family fiefdoms, um, all sorts of uh, plays that have caused uh, the party to be in opposition for 16 years. It's back in government now. But um, I was leader of the opposition for two and a half years um, and uh, that was played the, the lead, game. That was the Liberal opposition. Yes, the, the Liberal opposition yep. and, and played uh, the game of politics, if you like, very much as a member of the Liberal Party uh, until I resigned from the Liberal Party um, and decided to put the country, my state and my community first and as an independent MP, a Conservative, uh, worked constructively with a Labor government as a minister for four years and now I'm, I've moved on. And I was looking at the events in Canberra uh, of recent times and feeling quite good about the fact were that I'd doing moved the, on. Were you doing the wipe um, the brow and do that I, with I the didn't sweat? Miss, I didn't miss it. <laughs> no. uh, I, can I tell you, it was good to watch it on TV and not be involved. Mm. So, but, so how did this happen? Look, it's, it's very frustrating for people. Uh, that's pretty obvious. Um, usually these sorts of things, uh, changes of leader, happen when you're in opposition. When they happen when you're in government and you're talking about prime ministers or premiers, people quietly uh, or quite rightly are outraged and uh, by the turmoil of it all. Uh, we've had um, um, lots of prime ministers in recent years or recent uh, years, well, yes. five in five, yeah. I think, is the and, current uh, saying. I was actually leading trade missions as the Minister for Trade uh, to China and we got onto the subject of political stability and uh, we're very good at criticising countries like China and the answer I got back from uh, the Chinese people <laughs> I was with was, how many Prime Ministers have you had again in Australia? And he shut me up in a moment. Yes. Uh, because it is, it is tumultuous. We've had, um, well, we had John Howard and then, of course, uh, you know, we had Rudd, Gillard, Rudd, and then sort of Abbott, mm. you know, Turnbull, you know, uh, and uh, it, it's and now um, Scott Morrison. It, it has been tumultuous and I think people are, are quite rightly fed up with it, frankly. Um, I, I don't understand how it can happen when other countries have uh, a leader for a certain length of time and that doesn't change yeah. every year. Yeah. That Why does it happen in well, Australia? Well, that has to do with your constitution. Now, if, take, for example, the United States. Uh, love him or hate him. The people elected Donald Trump. He'll be there for four years, yes. and at the end of that period, they'll get uh, they'll get a chance to change. Yes. Um, they can change the leader of their parliament, and it doesn't affect the presidency. They have a different constitution. Here we have the Westminster system, and that means that when you go and vote on election day, you actually vote for a local member, who's usually a member of one party or the other, yes. and they decide who will lead the party. So if that if a majority of those members in that party decide they want to change leaders. They will, and so you may not finish up with the Prime Minister or the Premier you started with. Mm. Now, that's the way our system works. It has its strengths and its weaknesses. It has certain advantages, 
uh, and uh, it also has disadvantages. But that is that is the system we have. Well, let's let's just stop you there for a minute. So, mm -hmm. I don't think most people really understand that that's the way they're voting because mm. you get your how to vote form and it's usually sent out by both a party mm. and by a local member. Mm. And you don't always put those two together to say, no, actually, mm. I'm voting for you, I'm not voting for the party, I'm voting for you mm. because that person is standing for a party. Yes. So when the TV commercials happen on air, on TV and the press, mm -hmm. um, it's usually the person who w who is proposed to be mm. the Prime Minister mm. is the one who we're seeing, mm. isn't it? Yep. It wasn't always that way. No. Uh, in fact, our constitution makes no mention of political parties. They're not mentioned. And in the early days of our uh, parliaments, uh, particularly at the state level, uh, everyone was virtually an independent and things were sorted out in the parliament on the day. The major parties came along in the late 1890s in the case of the Labor Party and a bit after that in the case of the Liberal Party and in some respects have hijacked the system and now uh, we, we think in terms of Labor or Liberal and then a few minor parties. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that way. It was never conceived to be that way. It was always meant to be uh, our coming together of individuals. And a lot of those candidates, and I was one uh, when I first ran, are really hiding behind that label of being a member of the Liberal Party or the Labor Party. A lot of constituents who vote for them wouldn't really know them very well. Exactly. They're voting Labor or Liberal. Yeah. Now, of course, the major parties love that. And I think part of because it, it helps them survive and thrive within this system. And if there's a message uh, that I think is linked to the turmoil we've seen, it is that people are very angry when they see political parties putting their own interests Clearly. and their own survival mm -hmm. and the combat between the two of them yeah. like a barroom brawl, mm. ahead of what's best for, for the, country. the country and the state. And uh, it needs a little bit of uh, mature bipartisanship in order to work. Sometimes the government and the opposition, whether it's Labor or Liberal or whoever, a coalition of some kind, should agree with the other side because it's the right thing to do. Correct. And to give you an example of that, when I was South Australian leader of the opposition, uh, I got together with John Howard and the other leaders, and he made a very interesting point. Great man that he was, and that was is, is, or is as it was as yet. prime minister. Yes, yes. My yes. Point. yes. He said that when uh, the Keating and Hawke governments came up with some bold reforms, um, selling the Commonwealth Bank and Qantas, floating the banking system, floating the currency, important economic reforms that have become much of the Hawke Keating legacy, uh, the then Liberal opposition said this is the right thing to do for the country, so they didn't block it in the Senate. A lot of that goodwill seems to be gone. And now it seems the opposition's job is to get together with all those minor parties in the Senate and block everything yes. the government's doing. And the object seems to be to rip the government down and replace them rather than to do what's right for the country. And I think people yes. are cranky about that with good reason. Yeah, well, I agree. Absolutely. But, uh, but the other issue is every time you see a polish, politician talk from both sides, not just from one, they're making the point of how, how negative they... Well, they're being negative about whatever is before them. You know, it mm. doesn't matter which party it is. Yeah. He says this, he says this, he's got to knock that one down, this one's got to knock that yeah. one down. Also, the shortage of women within Parliament has yes. been discussed a lot, but do you feel that perhaps women are being almost frightened off mm. from, from going to politics because well, of this behaviour? Let me start with the first part of your question, and that was about, if you like, the combat, the negative combat of politics. Um, that's about more than... Uh, the politicians. It's actually also about the media. It's about people too in their lounge rooms who, um, who, um, for whom in some cases good news is not news. We mm. want the bad news. We want the conflict. Mm. In a way, the way the system's evolving and the media are very much players in this and that came to the fore during recent events when the media were, certain parts of the media were accused of being players in the game of the leadership spills with Turnbull rather than of commentators. Um, is that it's like the football on the weekend. You expect to go out and see a gladiatorial contest between two teams and the more um, abuse, the more mm. antagonism, the more controversy there is, the more it serves the media's reporting model and the more it resonates at home. Now, um, the second part of your question was about women. Um, that's not a comfortable place for anybody. Mm. But I think a lot of women 
and may I say a lot of men, don't want to go into that combative, uh, testosterone-filled gladiatorial contest and hence are scared away from politics. Well, it becomes a bit of a childish game after a while, doesn't oh, it? Do you that's feel what that? it seems like, absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, yes, uh, that's true. Uh, but, of course, to get your story up, you know, to get your news up, mm. to get attention to, to the issue you're debating, uh, you often need to put on a show or it won't get reported. Yes. It, it, it disappears. I get that. And going back to leadership contests, can I, uh, you know, just trying to explain from a politician's point of view the difficulties... Um, in politics, the organisational culture is such where you elect your leader. Now, I'll just ask you, how many chief executives of businesses or corporations in Australia, how many generals in the army, how many senior public servants, how many leaders anywhere in our community would still have their jobs if there was a ballot of all the people working for them to see if they were the most popular person there. <laughs> I'd put to you not very many. No, yeah, I mean, exactly. Good point. Now, so it's become a popularity vote, but just hold that mm, thought. Yes. We've got to just take a quick break and we'll be back to talk to Martin Hamilton Smith a whole lot more about this really interesting subject. Yes. Mm. Stay with us. Welcome back to our time. Our very special guest trying to explain what's gone wrong with uh, Australian politics is Martin Hamilton-Smith. Martin, um, we were just talking before about elect if we had to elect our business leaders, would they still be in place? And electing our prime ministers and members of uh, parliament and both houses. The confusion, I think, in the public's eyes is... We put them there to do a job. Mm. They're working for us. But it seems that they've forgotten that because of this infighting that's been going on. Um, I guess we're lucky in this country we're not having civil wars over the, the same situation. And when you mm. think back to olden times, particularly oh. olden uh, Roman times, they stabbed Julius Caesar in the Senate. How painful. <laughs> Very painful mm. place to be stabbed. Um, so really politics has been a bit cutthroat forever. Well, uh, that's certainly true. Um, it's, it's not for the faint-hearted. And whether you're a male or a female, uh, whoever you are, you need to go into it with your eyes wide open and, and pretty sure about your core values and who it is you're there to serve. Now, I think if there's some cynicism emerging, it's because increasingly they feel, uh, as members of the public, that uh, their politicians are serving a party or a faction within the party and advancing the party so it can win rather than doing what's right for the country. Mm -hmm. This is not a problem just in Australia, by the way. Um, I think uh, in the United States, uh, we got Donald Trump. It was, almost, um, it was almost a takeover because he wasn't fully supported by either of the two major parties. In Britain, it's taking the form of Brexit. Europe is awash with issues. Um, there is unhappiness with democracy. Now, maybe it's because we're affluent. Maybe it's because we've reached the top of the bell curve and democracy's delivered us almost everything and now we're becoming um, nonchalant and, and cynical about it. But the alternatives uh, are pretty unpleasant. Frightening. Well, there, and there are people out there with alternatives. Um, in countries like China, Russia, Turkey and in many other countries, there are models of the strong leader with some democracy uh, offering an alternative to the sort of democracy we, the United States and Europe has. Now, history tells us that um, the systems other than democracy, as I think Winston Churchill once famously said, uh, you know, aren't that uh, good. I think democracy was one of the worst systems of government known to man, apart from all the rest. <laughs> uh, we know where um, those countries without a democratic foundation uh, end. Having said that, if the custodians of our democracy are our politicians, we need to look after it. Uh, but, of course, that's true of we, the public, as well. Yes. We need to cut our politicians a little bit of slack. Um, it's they're not the, perfect and they never will be. No, but do you think it's the media causing this? Because, for example, Donald Trump has rewritten the rules, hasn't he, with, with mm. media? Because he's basically, thanks to Twitter, been able yeah. to just communicate directly to say, well, this is what I think. It is a very interesting question because I don't think it's the media as such, because the media is such a, 
it's jelly. You know, there's yeah. so much mm. in them. It's the formal media that we know, the free-to-air media. There's now social media. There's uh, all sorts of uh, online and uh, ether-based media, which is all competing for for market share, and they're running businesses. Mm. The result has been uh, politicians need to um, keep them entertained. I mean, it's no longer news; it's infotainment, and so uh, celebrity. Uh, you know, celebrity status is now expected of leading politicians. Mm. Their private lives are invaded and exposed, their children, their families. Mm. Um, their um, uh, failings are all out there for us all to see and we're finding out... And their past history. We're finding out, guess what, that nobody's perfect. And I think if, if all of the great leaders of history had had to face the sort of meteor scrutiny they have to face today, there'd be no great leaders of history. If we knew all about Abraham Lincoln's drinking habits or George Washington's affairs uh, or, um, and, you know, whoever you may choose to pick yeah. from history, yeah. we'd find them all flawed. Yes. And, and that's leading to a popular cynicism that uh, needs to be balanced. So we, we, we must not expect the impossible from our political leaders. Uh, on the other hand, the system needs to change or it's going to implode. And when it implodes, when democracy implodes, the result uh, is, is really good. The Frightening. Result is, well, is it's war, isn't it? It's un... what tends to become it's a not war. Good. So I think we all need to take a deep breath. Uh, the multiples of prime ministers that we've had can probably partly be explained by individual egos, and there's nothing wrong with ego. Anyone without one will never make a good politician. Mm -hmm. But, but hyper-individualism... Hyper hyper-partisanship instead of bipartisanship and um, the major political parties and, and to an extent the minor part, any party that ultimately seeks to advance itself at the expense of making decisions that are in the best interests of the country. Now, I, Instead I, of themselves. Now I played that game for 16 years. Mm -hmm. In the end I decided the party I was a member of had lost its way and I resigned from it. And then the other side came to me and said, well, look, will you work with us? And, yes. I, and I struggled to find reasons to say no. Because well, my because object you was couldn't to do serve anything. the country. Mm, but you couldn't do anything. You were locked into a party that wasn't in power. Well, 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 well it's true, but when you see it double faulting year mm. after year, losing election after election, then you, um, you despair. Now, or, or you try to change the leader. And... And, and this is where trying to change the leader isn't always a bad thing. You know, if the leadership is poor, if it was the army and the general was no good and people were getting killed, you'd want a new general. Mm -hmm. If it's business and the business is going broke and all the shareholders are losing their money, you need a new leader. You need devices to replace leaders who aren't effective. But when people see good leaders being dispatched... Like Malcolm Turnbull. Well, arguably, uh, and many people would have that view... Um, they scratch their heads and think, well, why did we do that? Because it but wasn't also, as if he was... Yeah. yeah, but at the same time, though, we've got Scott Morrison now yes. as our leader who was always backing up Malcolm Turnbull. Yes. So I I'm just not sure have how we, that works. Have He's... we just gone from one to the well, other yeah. with the same policy? Well, um, the old adage that if you um, live by the sword, you die by the sword, I, I think, has come into play. Um, the argument is that Malcolm... Um, sorry though we are in many cases to see him go, mm. uh, got there with a little bit of, of that himself. Uh, he replaced Tony Abbott, yes. another Prime Minister, who yep. people didn't want necessarily replaced. And then we go back to Rudd and Gillard and there were similar shenanigans. Mm. And, and so um, you, you start a cycle of uh, events that then unfold in unpredictable ways. I think the country needs a good dose of just steady calm at the moment so at the political level. So, can I ask you then, how long do you think that Scott Morrison will stay where he is, or is he <laughs> well, well, the next irony, week, will it, it be somebody well, different? Well, the irony of it is, if there's an election in May and if there were to be a change of government, we'd have yet another Prime Minister. There mm. could be another one, yes. And, uh, you know, I lead trade mi missions for the last four years around the world, and it, it is uh, starting to be uh, a point of conversation mm. with foreign leaders and oh, dignitaries and business people. They are looking for stability. Now, gracefully, our system is flexible enough to have absorbed these changes without the world caving in. Yeah. Australia is still a prosperous... Yes, nothing's happened place. since this happened. And only, the, only the constant um, media story as to what has happened. Well, it, it is a testament uh, to our system that Australia has still experienced years of 
productivity and growth and mm. the world hasn't come to an end despite this turmoil. Mm. Uh, however, uh, a good dose of um, constant solid leadership, the last um, sound long-lasting leadership we had was Howard. Yeah. I think people would like to see um, parties putting the country first. Of course, that will require, in my opinion, some structural change, and one of those is upper house reform. And I think Tony Abbott and others have made this point. You, you know, we've got a Senate, and in, the la in, and in all states but Queensland, we have upper houses. Where and, and Martin, the upper house is in place to try and balance everything in case you get a lower house that's a bit crazy? Well, that's how it was conceived, Malcolm, but mm -hmm. that's not how it's how it's That's involved. not how it's operated. The upper house, in the view of many, is now there to obstruct, destroy and bring down governments. Now, we could have an interesting debate about that. My point is, though, if you elect a government because you want it to change the country and then it can't get its agenda through because it's obstructed in the upper house... Mm then you'll get leadership changes, you'll get turmoil, mm. you'll get frustration. Now, but you're um, also getting a lot of money just being purely wasted that could surely go to a better circumstance. Of course you are, yes. of course you are. But uh, look, Kevin Rudd couldn't get his agenda through the upper house, neither could Julia Gillard. Um, Tony Abbott couldn't get his agenda through his first budget, floundered. Um, that resulted in, arguably in his change. Malcolm Turnbull couldn't get his agenda through. So, so the question now remains, is it broken? Is well, the system broken? I, I Does think, it really need I to be I think until... Addressed? My personal view is that until we find a way to return the Senate and the upper houses at state level back to their original um, design, which was a house of review, uh, mm -hmm. to ensure that things were thoroughly checked and gone over instead of an, a house of obstruction, we'll continue to get leadership changes and turmoil and we'll continue to elect governments that can't then deliver their... Uh, promise on their promises yeah. and all the mayhem that goes with it. Look, we'll continue this chat in just a moment, so stay with us because there's a couple more questions we need to ask. back with Martin Hamilton-Smith talking politics. So it's been, been a very interesting conversation so far. Now, what was your next question? Well, I'm very... Uh, to me, if I was going into politics, I would really be thinking, I want to make a difference in the world. Mm. I want to solve this problem or help those people or, you know, discover... help, help medicine discover the next cure for whatever. And I would have gone in with the right attitude does that hold with most politicians for very long once they get into a party? Um, I think you're right that most politicians go into it um, with high ideals and with the very best of intentions. Um, I think those in major parties are quickly um, disenfranchised of those ideals by factions, by the need to consider the group and advance the group, um, and by the need to compromise and then keep their button, their lips buttoned. And support. Uh, when things are agreed to by the group, they, they don't support. Mm. Mm. And you start making sacrifices you don't want to, to make. To why you did it in the first place. Now, when you were in government here, or a leader of the opposition here, you went around to a whole lot of prominent businessmen did. trying to convince them... I did. ...finish the I story. I wanted candidates for the 2010 election and I identified ten leading figures. I went round and saw them all and... He didn't they, ask me, Janice. No, did he? He didn't all, ask you either. Oh, well, <laughs> sorry about that. That's <laughs> right. But they all gave me a pretty similar answer and that was... Uh, well, in most cases, they were earning more than um, being a Member of Parliament would have been, uh, um, uh, you know, in a yes. position to offer, yep. which, which does raise a question about whether we're able to attract the very best on, sure. on purely mercurial grounds. Uh, they were concerned about having to um, expose all of their personal financial affairs to the world and disinvest themselves of their investments and sell mm. properties and things mm. like that, businesses. That was number one. The second thing was they were worried for their families. They didn't really want their wives and their children and their lives to become a public Which must be major, Martin. And uh, they were quite concerned about how it would change their lives. Sure. Um, and, and so that was, that was quite worrying for them. And the third thing was, they said to me, tell me about factions and political parties and mm. how does that all work? Because, and 
um, because they were very worried that as a talented person they might come in and find themselves squashed by some faction who having given said, everything well, up. Here's someone with a bit of talent. Uh, yes. We better make sure we squash this person because <laughs> heavens, they might advance themselves beyond us. And you know what? I didn't have an answer for any of those three concerns that was compelling enough to convince any of them to run. And I think that is partly why combined with the sort of shenanigans we've seen in Canberra recently that highlight it all, yeah. yes. that a lot of good people uh, don't put their hands up. A lot of good people do yeah. still, and there are some really good people in politics, but a lot of good people don't. And that's a shame. Mm. That's a shame. Martin, look, thank you, because uh, that's great information across the board, and we could go on talking forever, yeah. but we can't. We've run out of time. We have. <laughs> so until next time, come back again and talk to us again. Uh, Thank uh, you so much. And, and uh, until next yes. time. Yes, bye for now. Keep yourself nice till then when we see you again on our time.